In Prime Infrastructure, on the Configuration menu, under Plug and Play, click Dashboard. The Dashboard page opens. To integrate the APIC EM controller, which provides the gateway that supports remote device configuration, with Prime Infrastructure, click the Server icon. The APIC EM controller page opens. On the Toolbar, click Add. The APIC controller dialog box opens. In the server field, type the IP address of the APIC EM controller. In the port field, accept the default port number. Note, the APIC EM controller uses port 443 to support HTTPS secure communication. In the username and password field, type the credentials to log in to the APIC EM controller. The interval at which Prime Infrastructure pulls the device, and the secure protocol that it uses to communicate with APIC-EM, are predefined, and not available for changes. To save the controller configuration, click OK. The dialog box closes, and the page lists the controller. The system immediately verifies and reports, the controller's reachability status, in the reachability column, and updates the connectivity status at each 5-minute polling interval. At each polling interval, the system reports the reachability status in the history list. With the APIC EM controller now integrated with Prime Infrastructure, you can use Prime Infrastructure to deliver the software image that you need the router to run. To continue, navigate to the Plug and Play dashboard page. In this use case, the router is the first device to be installed at the company's first remote site, so it requires a bootstrap file, which will be delivered when it first powers on. Next, you need to configure the bootstrap file, which you plan to deliver, by using a USB flash drive. To configure the bootstrap file, on the dashboard page, click the bootstrap icon. The bootstrap page opens. To configure an APIC-EM bootstrap file, select the checkbox in the APIC bootstrap role. And then, click Clone. The system adds the entry and opens the fields of the clone file, which are available for editing. To identify the bootstrap file, in the name field, type the file name. In the APIC IP address field, type the APIC. EM controllers IPv4 IP address. To identify the port on the APIC EM to which the device connects in the EPIC EM port number field, accept the default port number. Important note APIC EM uses the default port number of 443 to support HTTPS secure communication. If you change the APIC EM port number to 80 in this step, which indicates using the HTTP protocol, the system automatically changes the port number to 443 when the device initially establishes its connection, or handshakes, with a APIC EM controller. To indicate the name of the controller interface that you need to use, in the Interface Name field, type the name. In this case, the controller has a static IP address. To indicate that you need to configure a static IP address, in the Interface IP Option field, select IP Address and type the interface's static IP address and its subnet mask. To configure the router to send incoming packet requests to the APIC EM server, indicate the server's destination prefix, its destination prefix mask, and the address to which the system routes the incoming packet requests which is the next available hop on the router. To continue, click Save. The bootstrap file that you added appears in the list. It is available for installation or for use when you configure and activate plug and play profiles. 
because you need the bootstrap file to be delivered. When the router is powered on, the installer will make the file available by connecting a USB drive to the router before powering it on. To save the bootstrap file to a USB drive, select the file row checkbox. And then, on the export bootstrap, drop down, menu, click, download bootstrap. In the save as dialog box, browse to, and select, the USB drive. In the file name field, type ciscortr.cfg. Important note. When you need a new device to install the file from a USB drive during the, power on process, you must rename the file, ciscortr.cfg. Do not accept the default name that appears in the, file name field. To continue, click, save. With the bootstrap file configured and saved, to the USB drive, in the page title, click the, dashboard, link. To prepare for device connection to, the APIC EM controller, the next step is to configure a, plug and play profile that will apply the software image file that, the router requires. To configure the profile, click the, PNP profiles, icon. The plug and play profiles page, opens. In the plug and play, list, expand the, plug and play profiles, heading. And then click the, router profiles, category. The, router profiles page, opens. On the toolbar, click, add. To complete a router profile, on the profile summary tab, in the profile basic section, in the name field, type a unique profile name, that makes its use recognizable. In the, description field, type a description of, the profile's use. The system populates, the author field with your system username automatically, and is not available for editing. To include the applicable, SNMP, Telnet SSH, or, HTTP credentials, that the profile will use to communicate with, the router, in the credential profile, drop down list, select the applicable profile. To indicate the oldest acceptable operating system version, that can accept the profile, you can indicate the name, and version, in the OS version, field. In this case, we do not indicate an operating system version. This way, the router can accept the image, regardless of the operating system. In the Profile Detail section, to provision the device with, public key infrastructure certificates, accept the default selection of the, Enable PKI, checkbox. Note, the APIC EM controller houses a certificate authority server, to support PKI certificates. Because the router does not require the use of a, secure, unique device identifier, for device authentication, clear the, Enable SUDI, checkbox. To deploy the software image that the router requires, in the, Software Image, drop-down list, select the software image, which is available in the, software image repository. When deploying a software image, to a device, the system saves it to a predefined location on the device, so the, image location field, is unavailable for editing. The router does not require any additional, configuration. To save the profile, click, Save as new plug and play profile. A system message opens, prompting you to save the profile. In the message, click save. The system saves the profile, which is available in the plug and play list. Then, the system begins uploading the software image to the APIC EM controller automatically. Important note. Do not activate the profile before the upload is complete. If the file is not intact on the controller, activation will fail. With the profile available, and the upload completed, the profile is ready for activation. To continue, click the Profile Instances tab. To activate the profile, which makes it available to configure the router, when it comes online, click Add. The system navigates to, 
Profile Activation, and opens the Plug and Play Device Provisioning Profile page, which provides a wizard to step you through the process. The wizard includes only the steps that are required, based on the profile. In this case, the profile contains a software image, so the wizard includes the image selection step. To indicate a profile name, type it in the device name field. Important note, the device name field supports using no spaces or using underscores to indicate spaces. If you include spaces in the device name, activation will fail. To indicate the router's serial number in the serial number field, type the number. To identify that the device type is a router by using the Cisco product identification number of the device in the PID drop-down list, select the identifier. To indicate details about the devices or provisioning in the description field, type the description text. Tip adding descriptions about the devices or provisioning that is occurring is particularly helpful when a group of system users are responsible for managing provisioning operations. To assign a device to a location group, accept the default selection of Location. And then, in the Location drop down list, select the Location group. Note to assign devices to location groups, either manually or dynamically, a system user must configure those groups previously so that they are available in the system. To continue, click Image Selection. Because the router profile contains a software image based on the use case, the image selection page opens and provides read-only details, including the image that the profile will deploy and the applicable activation options, which an administrator configures in the administrative system settings. To continue, click Management Credentials. The Management Credentials page opens and because the router profile includes a credential profile, populates the credentials field with the read-only profile information. To use the plug-and-play process to configure the credentials that the system will use to manage the device, select the Configure Management Credential to Device checkbox. To continue, click Profile Activation Summary. The summary page opens and presents the configuration information that the profile will activate on the router. Tip. At this point, you can step back to the wizard to make corrections as needed. To continue the activation process, click Finish. The system returns to the Profile Instances tab and lists the activation activity, indicating that the process is in a pending status. The process remains pending until the router comes online and initially connects to the APGM controller. When the router connects to the controller, the profile activation process begins. You can refresh the Profile Instances tab to monitor activation progress. To review activation progress in detail, in the Status field, click the Progress link. The system opens the device status page, which is filtered to list the router provisioning details. A progress indicator reports the percentage of progress as activation proceeds. To review the actions that are occurring during activation and their statuses in the provisioning status field, click the Information button. The status history pop up window opens and reports the stages and results of the process. When activation is complete, the system reports the final result on the device status page and on the dashboard page. In this case, the process successfully deployed and activated the software image on the router.